Hey everyone, 8Bishop here. Today we're going to break down the deck I've been running. I've named it Lunar Discard. I have like an 80 to 90% win rate with it. Uh, we're going to break down why each card that's in my deck is in my deck. And then uh, we're going to play three games and win or lose. Those will be the games that we post in the video. Uh, so to start, we're running Nightcrawler um, as one of our two one drops. Uh, there's just a lot of locations that prevent people from playing things till a certain turn number. Um, or you can't play things here at all. Or stuff gets destroyed etc it's a great filler for that reason um we also want to run more than just blade but we don't want too many one drops in our deck because we want to be hitting our correct targets with uh calling wing and stuff like that uh blade is of course in here because it's discard based uh, our two big uh win conditions are morbius and the collector um and morbius is pretty self-explanatory i'm playing a deck full of cards that discard um and <clears throat> he just gets stronger over time. The Collector might seem a little bit less intuitive, but what happened was I realized Moon Girl was a really good reload to add a couple of extra discard cards to my hand for Morbius, and I was like, well, if I'm running Moon Girl anyway, maybe I could run the Collector, and I started looking at the list, and uh, it wasn't hard to just cut like a card or two, um, and the Collector actually scales really well off of more than one thing. So the Collector uh, can become very worth its cost just by playing Moon Girl. You already have a two drop that uh, has like six ish power. Um, but Swarm will also trigger the Clutter twice. And I've had games where like the Clutter gets to like 20 plus power just from Swarm. Uh, Apocalypse will also trigger the Clutter. So we have three different engines that fuel the Collector. So we can pretty reliably hit those. Um, Wolverine is in here because it's just another great discard target. It's honestly probably the weakest two drop in our deck, but I don't have anything better to replace it with right now. Uh, and then pretty much everything else is is self-explanatory. They discard cards and they do something when they discard or they just discard a target that we want. Calling is our best uh, activator for Swarm, but it can sometimes get a little bit clunky if you top deck a one cost too late. But honestly, it's pretty much a discard deck with a little bit of a collector tech, and it's surprisingly powerful. So let's get into these games. <clears throat> Let's see, yeah. To do this is one of those awkward turns where we act we want to keep our engine, so we're not gonna play the blade at all. Some hands you uh you get, you have to actually play a little bit slower paced, which can be awkward for some people. Um we'll go ahead and just throw a nightcrawler right here, and that's it. <laughs> this is honestly one of our weaker hands because we didn't hit like any of any of our actual like stuff that we want to hit early in the game, but that's okay. Th now at least Lady Sif is safe to play because it'll trigger the apocalypse. Um, I'm gonna hold the blade for one more turn, but I might just have to play it. Oh yeah, okay, it's looking like we have to play it. We're actually going to play this Gambit down too, and we're just going to hope to win this location that they just flooded out. If we hit the Sif, we're in a really good spot here. Unfortunately, lose the Moon Girl, but I don't think she's going to do much in this particular game anyway. It does suck to hit our other Activator, though. Uh, this is definitely one of our weaker games, but we have a pretty good head start because of their own strategy here. Um, we're going to go ahead and just throw Swordmaster. Actually, you know what? Let's just go for Atlantis and um, our flooded territory because they're going to be able to move everything to New York if they want to win New York. So that's not a good thing to contest for us. Honestly, I'm feeling very good. Yep, there we go. That's the win. Uh, that was a really clunky hand. So identifying um, what 
can be played and what needs to be held for a little bit longer and understanding when to slow play and when to just play your discard cards is a, a bit of a learning curve for the deck, but um, I think I played that just about as good as I could have with the hand I got. That was rough, because normally, even if you don't get your activators, you'll get, like, your swarm, and then you'll still feel like you're in a pretty good spot. Um, this isn't the worst. We probably just play Collector on two. There's a chance the Collector does nothing. That is a risk of the Collector. You do need to hit um, at least one of its activating cards, and then successfully discard or play them, depending on which activator you hit. <clears throat> if we draw a Swarm right now, then we're in a really good spot for the Collector, because Colleen's guaranteed to hit it if we play the Wolverine first, and if we don't hit a cheap unit, we can just play Colleen and get the Wolverine. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get the Wolverine for free here. Now, the Mindscape makes it a little bit awkward, because a lot of our strategies uh, like to build up a really big hand uh, with Swarm or... Um, with Moon Girl, and we aren't going to want to do that and then give our opponents ammo, so we're going to have to play a little bit differently. Uh, armor is a little bit rough for Gambit, because Gambit won't smart select where he's killing from, so he can just whip his ability. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm thinking that this one's just going to be another tempo game. Uh, we, we hit the clutcher, but we didn't hit any of the activators. That's a, a risk you take, but the thing is, is like literally just top decking an activator can make a huge difference. So, so here's the thing: is I can make the collector stronger right now, but if I make the collector stronger, then they get two swarms uh, during the next turn. So, in a normal game without mindscape, this is a really good top deck because we actually be able to add four power to our collector here, and then. Uh, we'd be able to play two threes for free next turn. But instead, I think we're just going to hard play them. Since uh, Nightcrawler can still move, we're just going to put the power there. Oh, come on. Gambit, hit that, hit that Iron Man. Come on. Come on. Just one time. Nope. Okay. Oh, they're running a Morbius as well. That's not the worst thing for us. How many cards have I actually discarded, though? Discard three? No, because I didn't discard for Gambit, so I've only discarded two, so that's only four power. We're going to do this, and hopefully this Wolverine just goes over here. <laughs> <clears throat> yep, they top deck the dino. Oh, they don't have any cards though, right? Yeah, never mind, that dino does nothing. Think we're okay? Are we okay? Ooh, we are okay. Woo! It's funny too because I was hoping the Wolverine went over there, but uh, at that point we would have just been playing for a bigger draw. Woo! By the way, if you're wondering why we don't run Sentinel to activate our collector, um, it's just we didn't have space in the deck for it. Uh, the only thing that we could potentially cut is Wolverine. But because we want to discard very specific cards with things like Colleen, Sentinel can end up being really clunky and we don't want to get stuck discarding it, but playing it just keeps them in our hand. Oh man, uh, cloning bats plus collector is actually quite nuts for us. Especially because we can actually just go pretty hard on our collectors, and then Moon Girl at the end of the game. 
Oh, they also have a collector? Yikes. People have started figuring out the collector is a lot stronger than they initially thought. Man, couldn't have been my Wolverine. They lost their Moon Girl. That is huge for us. Um, I mean, we might as well get the extra power on the collector. Let's do it. Um, this gets a little interesting here. I don't think we want to, like, overfill our hands since we have the Moon Girl, too. The Sith is going to discard the Moon Girl. Um, let's just drop a Wolverine, like, normally. Okay, the double dinosaur is a little problematic, but we know they don't have Moon Girl. Okay, that's that's actually a pretty big deal for us. Maybe this, this, and then I don't actually think we can contest this space very well, so we're going to go ahead and throw Moon Girl here. <clears throat> huh. They really wanted to win that space, put in another dinosaur there, and I get that they get to refresh it, but wow, you kind of just threw the vault in my direction. Add three more cards to our hand. I think we can actually win the cloning bats, right? I think they threw by uh, locking themselves out there. Yeah, that's ours. There's, there's absolutely no way they're adding 16 power to that. There we go. That's all three games. Um, you guys see a little bit of the collector. Morbius didn't really do much, but I, I promise he really does. So yeah, thanks for checking it out. Hope you like the deck. Let me know in the comments if uh, there are any improvements you think the deck could make. Um, if there are any weak points you think could be shored up pretty easily. Uh, there are some cards I'd like to add that I just don't have. So uh, if there's any of those cards like Ghost Rider that you think should be in the deck, I just don't have the Ghost Rider. Um, that would probably be what Wolverine gets cut for. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed it, like, comment, subscribe, all that good YouTube jazz. Thanks. Bye.